Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to my tier list for patch 2.6 in the Dragon Lane and in the support role. We've had a few changes with AD carries and a few changes with supports as well. So I'm going to go over like kind of my thoughts about the meta and how everything is going to change. Even though I don't really think it is going to change too much really. First up, we have Varus. Now Varus hasn't been changed at all. This is probably... The biggest surprise of the whole patch, he got a new item as well, Edge of Night, which will be really, really good on him. You'll probably build it maybe third item or something like that. You'll probably go, or maybe even fourth, fourth item. You maybe go uh, Man Immune, Ghost Blade, Grudge, and then Edge of Night after that. So you might not get into the later stages of the game, but it's a good defensive item. Gives you a lot of stats, a lot of health as well, a lot of attack damage, even more armor pen, which is all really, really well and good for Varus. So Varus doesn't move at all. He stays in his place, and with him... In the S plus tier is Lucian. Now, I've uploaded a lot of Lucian content over the last few days, and I've been playing more and more Lucian. And this champion is just absolutely disgusting. Like the amount of damage output you can do at Lucian doesn't matter. You know at what point of the game really. It's just a combination that he can do with the Infinity Edge, the Solari Charge Blade, and the Bloodthirster. The damage output is just out of this world. It's just far and above beyond any other champion in the game right now in my opinion in terms of like burst damage in terms of consistent damage you got other champions as well but in terms of heavy burst damage lucian is up there as one of the best for sure and he's probably the best solo queue carry champion in my opinion as well you got dashes he works so so well with solari charge blade you know you can get your cooldown on your dash as well with your passive you can just keep proccing the um the solari keep getting 100 percent crit and keep on getting the extra damage as well which is all really really nice for lucian so they're my two s plus tiers um i don't think there's anyone above these two right now that are probably you know above and beyond these two i think these two are just above and beyond the rest really to be honest um behind ezreal ezreal's still quite good obviously he's not as easy to play as the other ad carries you gotta land your skill shots you know, you got to know when to go in. You got to keep your dash available when um, when you can, because obviously the dash does have a long low cool uh, long cooldown. Sorry, it, it is a very safe champion to play. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like you have to wait for a bit for Ezreal to come online. You have to wait until two or three items, then Ezreal will come online. He'll be completely unstoppable, which will be kind of crazy when it gets obviously to the late game. But in the early game. He is a bit weak. He doesn't really offer too much, to be fair, especially the first dragon fight. If you do have a team comp that wants to contest around first dragon fight, you know, you've got champions like Varus and Lucian and probably even like Corky as well with the package and other champions that will probably offer more than um, than Ezreal. But he's still really, really strong champion, still really safe to play. And speaking of safe champions, you've got Corky right next to him as well. Again, a very safe champion with the Valkyrie as well. You still go for that crit, uh, crit build with the Essence Reaver, Solari Charge Blade, Infinity Edge. You just getting full blown crit again, doing a lot of damage. But again, Corky is not as strong in the early game. He's still kind of, I would say, not weak in the early game, but he's not as strong in the early game as he is in the late game. And that's kind of where I feel like the champions like Varus and Lucian are kind of above the rest. Is that Varus and Lucian are pretty much good at all stages of the game, but Ezra and Corky do struggle a little bit in the early game, but they can scale up into the late game really, really well. Obviously, Corky, you have his passive as well with his package and everything, which is really, really strong, which is very nice. Kaisa, we haven't seen too much, to be fair, but she is still a strong champion. You do see her played a little bit the here and there, but I haven't really picked up on her since the nerfs, to be honest. I played a few games here and there. I did feel like the punch a little bit with her Q nerf, but I don't really play her as much just because there's other champions that I feel like are just more fun, to be fair. You know, you do, with Kaisa, you do have a lot of scaling. You do have that power spike early on with the BF Sword, with the Executioner's Calling and the Lon Sword to get your evolves as soon as possible. So it's quite nice to play Kaisa, but I don't know. I just don't I don't really like playing Kaisa at the moment. I like Varus. I like um, Lucian. I like Corky, Zaya, all these champions as well. Even Caitlyn as well. I've been picking up as well since she's been released. And speaking of Caitlyn, we're going to move on to Caitlyn now. Now, obviously, Caitlyn got her nerf in this patch. Unfortunately... I don't think it's enough of enough. I mean, that's a lot of damage to be taken off the ultimate, but I don't think it's enough to warrant her being, you know, an average sort of champion. I still think she's going to be really, really strong. You know, her passive is still really, really strong. Her poke is still really, really strong. 
you know you can set up traps so well around objectives you got you got you got an escape mechanic as well with the net net in you got combos as well this champion is still going to be you know really really strong in my opinion and i still think she'll definitely be up there as uh, as one of the best for sure because she's just so hard to deal with in solo queue because of her range and because now morgana is in the game now as well you can pair caitlin with morgana which is going to be a complete deadly duo down in the bot lane because you feel like you're diving onto caitlin you feel like you're you know doing some damage but then the black shield comes out and you can't actually cc her at all and she can e she can easily you know net away auto attack and just do a lot of damage zaya now zaya received quite a big nerf in my opinion uh, i believe it's probably one of the maybe one of the biggest nerfs i mean it's definitely the biggest nerf out of all of the um all of the ad carries because the other two champions i'm going to mention is buff probably the biggest nerfs maybe in the whole tier list i'm thinking of probably is to be fair yeah it probably is the biggest nerf in the uh in the whole tier list and maybe even the biggest nerf for the patch to be fair um she obviously had uh her ad got nerfed and also her w got nerfed especially in the late game as well now zyra in the late game i think it it's kind of acceptable i would say in terms of nerf i mean her w was up a lot to be fair in the late game i think it was crazy like a 11 second cooldown now it's up to like 16 seconds so it's a big difference five seconds you know you can't just use it randomly you have to actually time it when you want to use it now so you can't just use it randomly get like one or two auto attacks and that's it you need to make sure you time it to when you're about to auto attack or when you're about to get into a fight because it's going to be a long time until you get it again so you need to make sure you time it correctly and obviously her base ad nerf in the early game she's not going to have as much damage now she now has the same base ad as ash which we'll obviously get into in a bit but i still think she's really really strong if you know how to play her you'll still be able to carry with her for sure she has an ultimate as well for um safekeeping you know against anything like uh, a brum ultimate a camille ultimate anything like that she's still one of the safest champions to play and uh, still really really strong draven hasn't changed too much still a plus in my opinion um again i've moved vein into a plus tier as well just because of how difficult she is to play i feel like these two champions could definitely move up into s both of them but i put them down below in a plus just because of how difficult they are to play they're not as easy as the champions above. I mean, maybe Zaya's a bit hard as well, but she still does, in my opinion, more damage than, you know, the likes of Vayne and Draven. Maybe not in a respective early game for Draven and late game for Vayne, but I think, like, overall, over the course of the game, uh, Zaya can do more damage. But <clears throat> Draven, obviously really, really strong in the early game. If you do get put behind over the early game, it is really hard. You, you do need to make sure you get a kill before you actually die. If you don't, then you lose a lot of your adoration stacks and you just lose a lot of gold overall so it's a bit hard vein again in the early game really really weak really really hard to kind of get into the late game with vein unless you have someone next to you like a lulu like a janna or someone that can defend you maybe even a morgana now as well might even see morgana vein in the bot lane but we'll have to see how that one works uh tristano again nothing's really changed she still stayed the same for me same with jinx as well uh these two champions have really really high um hyperscale late game potential uh, especially jinx as well with like lulu and everything you could just combo them two together and be really really strong i believe i well i i think the vein lulu is probably better than jinx lulu in my opinion just because vein just has a lot more outplay potential and jinx just pretty much stands there and just auto attacks with a rocket form all the time which is uh not always the best option but sometimes it can work in team fights just is just really really hard to play unfortunately um she does do a lot of damage she is getting buffed and buffed and buffed and she actually wasn't buffed this patch probably the first time for maybe three or four patches but maybe they feel like she's in a pretty stable spot but i don't think she's still as good as the others um now ash ash is an interesting one now ash obviously saw a lot of play in na regionals and everything and you know they kind of got used to her a little bit and you know she's making some decent plays and the build is i think the build's kind of all over the place no one really knows what to build with her but the buff that she got the base ad buff is now up to 58 i think it's 52 before so now it's the same for you know the likes of zaya so in the early game you might actually be able to do quite a lot of damage to be fair obviously it's not going to help her a lot in the late game because the base attack damage mainly helps you in the laning phase but that's kind of what she was struggling in the first place she wasn't really doing a lot of damage but now you know i might have to give her a try i might have to give her a try and uh see how she feels after the recent boss and the same with misfortune as well both ash and misfortune for me is as uh, moved up i think these two are a lot better now than uh, senna and um Jin. uh the movement speed buff for misfortune is really really good because now she'll be able to kind of kite around a little bit more obviously if she gets attacked and she loses her movement speed but 
you know, being able to get that little bit of extra movement speed for a champion that's very, very mobile is very nice. And obviously, she got a damage buff on her ultimate as well, which is going to be really good in combination with a support champion that I've added, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, Action hasn't really changed. Action is still staying the same. I still believe he's a better mid laner than ADC. I probably will never play him as an AD carry. Um, but yeah, there's that, to be fair. There's not really anything to really say about Akshan. Um, I just don't really feel like he can win in 2v2s. He's a lot better in 1v1 situations. Like I said, especially in the mid lane as well. So we'll see how that works. Uh, and then in the B tier, we have uh, Senna and Jin. So Senna got a little buff, but again, you don't want to play AD Senna. You don't want to play Farming Senna. I'm going to keep saying this every single time I do a tier list until they buff AD Senna again. But the soul drop rate when you farm minions is really, really bad. If it's Fasting Senna... Fasting Senna is probably like S or A+, plus, but Fasting Senna, you actually need to have a duo to be uh, for it to be able to work because some people won't understand what Fasting Senna means fully. And then lastly, my beloved Jin didn't receive a nerf, so he is still down in the B tier. Um, no new, really new items for him. No new runes for him. No new nothing for him, really, unfortunately. And uh, no buff for him either. So he is still sitting down in the B tier. So that's what I think about AD carries. I think... There's a lot of champions that can move about. I think, like, the, you know, the likes of Misfortune and Ash could move up as well if, you know, people understand how to play them maybe a bit more and maybe get, find a new build for them. Maybe find them a lot stronger than what they were. Uh, champions like Zaya might move down since, uh, obviously, nerfs. It will see... Well, we have to see how much it, uh, it affects her in the late game. We'll have to see how that goes. And, obviously, champions like Varus Solution that have not been touched at all. They're still going to say the strongest but it's going to be interesting to see how this moves around because it can move around quite a bit but for this one it's kind of like a, a prediction i guess of what the tier list is uh, going to be now support support is the interesting one i'm going to get into one champion very very specifically obviously morgana is here but another champion more specifically in this uh but before that uh nami uh, lulu nothing's really changed for them obviously font of life got nerfed but i feel like a lot of people went away from font of life from these enchanters anyway because summon area is just so much better. Um, Nami Lulu didn't get changed at all. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, didn't get changed at all. So they're still, for me, the best. They're still going to be really, really good. And a good thing about Nami and Lulu as well is actually um, they're pretty good against uh, Morgana as well. Because they're able to stop the Black Shield. Obviously, they don't really have a lot of... Uh, Lulu doesn't really have a lot of crowd control. But if there's a Black Shield on a target, Lulu can just EQ most of the time. I mean, it depends on the numbers on Morgana, but most of the time, Lulu can just EQ, and then you'll just have to, um, and then the Black Shield is basically gone. That's how the Black Shield of Morgana works, is that if there's enough magic damage dealt, that the magic damage shield is gone, then the Black Shield will be gone. That means you can still use the next um, next crowd control ability to crowd, crawl, uh, crowd control the target that Morgana Black Shield. So it's really, really good. And obviously, Nami as well is really, really good. Obviously, both of them have shields as well and healing, which is still really, really strong in the game as well with the items. Um, but yeah, these two champions are really, really good against Morgana. You just have to make sure you don't get caught out by uh, Morgana, Morgana's uh, Dark Binding. Uh, again, Janna just behind them as well. Janna is still okay. Uh, still pretty good. Um, again, it's just all about peeling with Janna. If there's a heavy engage comp, then Janna is the perfect pick for you. Obviously, she's not going to be as strong as the likes of Nami, Lulu. Probably not even as strong as Brom, Thresh, Rakan, and even Morgana, to be fair. I don't think she's she's as strong as the others. Remember remember that these are not in any order as well. If I was to put them in any order, it would probably be this, maybe, I would say, if it was in any order. Um, but yeah, Janna is uh, not as strong as the, um, as the rest, but... Um, yeah, it's still fairly strong, uh, strong overall. And just being able to, you know, peel for your AD carry and peel for your team and get a lot of healing and shielding is uh, really, really nice. Uh, Brom obviously got a Font to Life nerf. Now, the Font to Life nerf is actually pretty big. Uh, was it minus one second? And also the uh, direct, the cooldown has been nerfed as well. So now the cooldown's on us. So we'll have to see how that affects Brom overall. Uh, but Brom as a champion is still really, really strong. You still have your concussive, blo uh, concussive Blows passive, which is still really, really strong. Especially in combination with the likes of Lucian, Kaiser, you know, Vayne. Anyone that can really auto-attack a lot and auto-attack really, really quickly. He still does a lot of damage as well. He still has a lot of good peeling with the shield and um, with the ultimate as well. So I don't think, I think the champion will still be okay. But I think Fontal Life might affect him a little bit in the uh, early lane phase because he won't be able to heal as much as he, um, as he did before. Rakan still going to be really, really good. Rakan still really, really strong. One of the best team fight uh, supports in the current meta. Being able to use the proto belt, use the dash to knock up people, use your ultimate to charm everyone as well. You know, it's multiple builds you can go with uh, Rakan as well, and he's still 
one of the best out of all the supports, really, to be fair. Um, Thresh, again, still really, really strong. One of the best solo queue supports, in my opinion. The only thing about Thresh now is that Thresh is going to be really hard countered by Morgana. Because the death sentence of Thresh is takes a long time to charge up, if Morgana is clever, then Morgana will keep her black shield every time and make sure that her ADC or herself doesn't get hooked. So you can kind of react to it and make sure that you don't get um, hooked at all. But Morgana are gonna, is going to maybe counter most of the uh, engaged champions, if not all of the engaged champions. Uh, but we'll get into that in a second. But um, yeah, as I said, um, Thresh... You know, with all your hooks, with your lantern as well to um, help your team. You got your box as well to keep the team safe. You can build tanky. Um, yeah, just overall a great, um, great solo queue pick to uh, to pick up definitely. Now Morgana. Now this is going to be a bit hard because obviously Morgana is. I'm not actually playing Morgana. I'm recording this the night before of the patch, so I haven't actually tried Morgana yet. But I do feel like she is going to be a really, really strong support because there's so much crowd control in the bot lane that she can stop. As I mentioned, Thresh. Morgana's really, really good at, uh, with, sorry, uh, Leona as well, Galio, Amumu, which we'll get into later, Alistar, Sona, Seraphine. There's a lot of crowd control in the support area at the moment. Even Brand as well uh, can be really good at and can be really good with these magic supports as well. But you have to be careful when to use the Black Shield to make sure that you're not going to, um, you don't need to stop any crowd control after the poke. Um, but yeah, Morgana, very good offensively and very good defensively as well. Has a really good ultimate. Um, is able to buy Zonya's really, really cheap as well, which I'll probably mention um, in another video. But yeah, you can buy Zonya's really, really cheap because it's a really, really good item uh, for Morgana to get straight away. Because you can use your ultimate and you can channel your ultimate and you can just stasis in the middle of the team fight. And the ultimate will still keep going and it will still keep rooting as well at the same time. So really, really strong champion. It's going to be interesting to see what people build on her. I believe it's going to be like a full AP build, but we'll have to wait and uh, wait and see about that. Uh, Brand is still, you know, pretty decent down the bot lane. Mainly kind of seem a bit more in the dragon lane. We saw him a bit more in the dragon lane than in the uh, Horizon Cup. I still feel like he's going to be pretty good in the support role. Um, he still does a lot of damage. He still has a lot of crowd control at the same time. In team fights, he's really, really strong as well. So we'll have to see um, how that comes up. Leona as well. Great lockdown potential. Really, really tanky champion as well. To be fair, even Leona can move up to yesterday. I've seen a lot of good Leonas like um, Excalibur and Keys doing really, really well with Leona. She's just super, super tanky. Does a lot for the team. Has great lockdown potential as well. But again, with champions like Morgana now in the game, if you're against a good Morgana... You have to make sure you time your engage now. It's super, super important now for most of these champions. When you're against Morgana now as a, as a support, you need to make sure you time the engage. You need to make sure you memorize the uh, cooldown of the Black Shield, the third ability of Morgana, and then engage when she doesn't have Black Shield available. And then it should be free. Most of the time, it will be free. Um, if she does have Black Shield up, it will be a bit hard. Senna obviously got a slight buff to our Ultima. The missile speed went up by a little bit, but... It doesn't actually mean too much, to be fair. I mean, missile speeds are nice. You get the shield earlier. You can do damage earlier, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. But it doesn't actually make a lot of difference, to be fair. Um, she's still pretty good in the support role, to be fair. And still pretty good, as I said before, as a fasting center. Still does a lot of damage. Still scales very well and everything like that as well. So, Senna is still staying, staying the same. Nothing really um, changed with her. She's, she's still in the A-plus tier. Um, Galio as well. Again, staying in the A-plus tier as well. A lot of lockdown potential. Um, very, very tanky as well. At the same time with the support Galio build, you can even go AP Galio if you want to as well. I uh, can still work really, really well with all of his uh, poke damage. Obviously, you have his ultimate as well, which can zone a lot of um, a lot of enemy champions away from your AD carry. Just a lot of good tools that Galio has that you know that could be work, um, that could be really good in the uh, in the lane phase and even late game. Now, this is probably the biggest what the hell moment of this whole tier list. So you'll probably look. Looking at me right now thinking, Stuart, why have you put Amumu in the A-plus tier? Right, let me quickly explain because I don't want to go into, into tube depth. His first ability, his Q, now has double charges. This is what made Amumu's support in PC Leg Legends really, really strong. Reason being is that you can lock down enemies really, really easily. Like super, super easily. You can even get things like um, you can stun with your first ability. Then if you time it right, you can use your ultimate after that as well. And then if you're really lucky, you can even um, Q afterwards as well. Just depending if the enemy team has enough, ten um, enough tenacity or not. The really important thing is the um, the Q. The double charge now on the Q. Now the only downside is that pretty much all the rest of Amumu got nerfed. His ultimate duration got nerfed. Um, his E slow, I believe, got nerfed. 
his W damage got nerfed, his base stats got nerfed. So there's a lot of things that got nerfed. And I think Riot are probably thinking the same thing. Kind of what PC League of Legends obviously didn't have and the advantage of is that Wild Rift and the developers are probably thinking, okay, we're going to make this change into League of Legends. Uh, we're going to make the change the same as League of Legends, but we're going to nerf the rest of his kit because of how powerful he was in the support role in uh, PC League of Legends. So that's kind of the good thing about Wild Rift is that when PC League of Legends changes happen before that, the Wild Rift devs can take them changes and be like, okay, we're going to make these changes, but we're going to be, uh, we're going to, you know, make it that little bit different to make sure that he doesn't break the meta. But I still think she'll, he might be pretty strong in the bot lane. I might give him a try myself as well. He actually got paired with Misfortune before as well, which is what I mentioned before. Misfortune, uh, Amumu, Amumu was a really, really strong bot lane because of all the crowd control with Amumu and because of the bullet time of uh, Misfortune, you could just lock down targets and do a lot, a lot of damage. So I have to see, um, so I have to see how that works out. Um, Alistar, still down the A tier, still is going to struggle. Going to struggle even more now with the likes of Morgana and you just can't engage at all at the moment with Alistar. At times you can engage, you can find the right fights. Um, it was played quite a bit in the Horizon Cup as well last month, but there's not really a lot to really, you know, say about Alistar, to be fair. It's just really, really tough for you to engage. There's a lot of champions that can counter Alistar as well. You just need to make sure you find the right team fight if you do play Alistar. He still can work. He's still super, super tanky. He's probably better to play as a five-man or as a duo or even trio, because then you'll be able to actually communicate when you're going to engage with Alistar, which is kind of the, uh, the pinnacle point. Um, again... All of these um, supports are not really changed, to be fair. Um, Sona, Seraphine, Lux, they're all going to be pretty much the same. They're actually kind of probably all worse now because of Morgana. Again, the Black Shield stops the Seraphine ultimate, the Lux binding, the Sona ultimate as well. There's a lot of ways that Morgana can counter these sort of um, cha the support champions that have a lot of crowd control. Um, but Sona's still really, really good in terms of scaling in, um, in the late game. You just really, really struggle in the early game. You just need to play as passive as possible. But if you get into the late game, you have low cooldowns. You have un pretty much unlimited mana with the build as well, with the um, Seraph's Embrace mana build. Um, and yeah, you can still carry fights with uh, with Sona. Uh, probably with Sona more than the other two. Um, Seraphine still has a lot of good um, lock lockdown potential. Um, she still does a lot. Of, she still does a lot of damage. She still has a lot of healing and shielding as well. Um, and she still could be really, really impactful if you can hit like a five man ultimate as well. And the same with Lux as well. If you can hit a five man ultimate. Um, depending if you build obviously damage or um, support Lux, you can go either way, but it kind of depends on your team. Um, again, if you got like full damage Lux, you hit one um, one binding and then you can one shot pretty much the AD carry, which can help you in team fights. But in terms of helping the team, Lux doesn't do too much, but we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Again, if you're against the likes of Morgana, it's going to be really, really hard to try and catch someone out with a, with a binding because of the Black Shield. Um, Soraka got a slight buff to her heal on her second ability. I don't think it's going to do too much, to be honest. The champion can be kind of annoying at times, but I don't think like a 10, what's it, 10 heal buff or something like that to Soraka is going to make a uh, make a lot of difference, but we'll see. And then Blitzcrank, I move Blitzcrank onto B tier. Okay, Excoundrel has changed my mind. The legend is himself, Excoundrel, changed my mind. Blitzcrank is going to be the best support. And I can, I'm kidding, he's not going to be the best support. But if you know how to play Blitzcrank, and if you play Blitzcrank like a scoundrel, and if you're against a, an enchanted support, not Morgana, because Morgana can just black shield your hook, and then you'll just become useless. But if you're against enchanted supports, you can hook them, you can take advantage of it, but you have to have an aggressive support with you. I mean, aggressive AD carry with you as well for that to be um, useful. And yeah, that's pretty much it, to be fair. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I might do a tier list maybe after a second, um, you know, an patch 2.6a or patch 2.6b um whatever they come out i don't know if we're going to be taking a break now because of christmas i have to wait and see but yeah i thought i'd give you a preemptive 2.6 tier list to get you guys ahead on the game and get you guys thinking about you know all these sort of champions especially ad carries as well it's gonna be really interesting to see to um to you know try out the likes of ash misfortune um even like Zyra as well because of her nerfs and even Caitlyn as well. It's going to be really, really interesting. And obviously, a Mumu Misfortune in a bot lane might be the strongest bot lane, but we'll have to see. And obviously, you know, with new items as well, new buffs, new nerfs, I see how 2.6 fits. But yeah, thank you all for tuning into the video. I do appreciate it as always. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.